Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, DC. A lot of stuff going on with DC, Brian. Uh, Colin Farrell already setting the stage for the reasons we won't probably see another season. Keanu Reeves signing up for another movie. Constantine 2. I didn't have, I never saw Constantine one, Brian. I think you said you liked the movie. I know Tracy liked the movie. And then Brian Sergeant Rock. This one, Brian, is going to be very interesting. Not because of the character, Brian, because of the name. Let's get into it. Colin Farrell already saying it. What he said. Well, so Colin Farrell is is how should I put this mercurial he's always been that way throughout his career he speaks his mind yeah um and he obviously we we love his portrayal as Oz but and he was very if you go back he was very excited when they announced this penguin show uh and, and we're kind of giving him his shine outside of the Batman but he got to the end of filming the first season and now he's out promoting it as we're about to get it here um and he they asked him about a second season after the creators of the show basically said the door is open for that because he they confirmed like okay so you get this season he's got a small role they said it's a small role in batman 2 and they said the door is open they could do a second season and then he said this i don't know man don't get me wrong i loved it but it got in on me a little bit. And by the end, I was bitching and moaning to anyone who would listen to me that I just effing wanted it to be finished, end quote. I mean, maybe time will heal that a little bit, but he sounds over it to me. You know, I saw on Instagram a time lapse of him getting his makeup done. I can't imagine every day for hours just sitting and just getting that stuff done and then being all uncomfortable it's, it's a tough task but he did it he did it well when he had the opportunity the first time this was going to probably obviously was obviously going to take a lot more of those days because of what he was doing what he signed himself up to you know the praise that he got for his character and the perhaps money that he got right so enough is enough when you get to that point of i can't do this every single day i'm do doing it because i have to now but after this is done is i'm done yeah and the performance suffers i think he's also kind of saying there is a big difference between asking me to show up a few days for the film and put on the makeup and having me show up for a few months to <laughs> shoot a season those are very different requirements yeah. because the end goes on to say he's talking about lauren lefranc who's the showrunner and he said quote lauren said look if I could find a way that makes sense, meaning the second season, would you talk about it? And I said, absolutely. And maybe in a year I would. But when I finished, I was like, I never want to put that <laughs> effing student effing head on again. End quote. This is a wrap. I, I think it is code for he would do it in the Reeves movies because it's sh a shorter commitment. I don't think he wants to do four seasons, eight to ten episodes in, as the character. That's what he's kind of signaling. Gotcha. To me. As opposed gotcha. to, I yeah. will never be Oz ever again. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Hopefully, but the reviews Brian... are good. Reviews are good. Reviews of the show have been good. Like, so, I mean, when I does think it, come we're, out? Uh, it comes out. Well, we're taping this two, three days before it comes out. Oh, okay. Or two days. Yeah, two days before it comes out, actually. Sorry. Two days before it comes out. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Brian, Keanu Reeves has signed up for. Constantine 2, Brian. Why is this happening? I know the money, probably because he, Keanu Reeves did like or enjoy or likes his character or enjoy playing the character. So why not come for a second one? He's been doing it for every other movie, right? So are there, I mean, there are fans of Keanu Reeves who would go see this and obviously uh, fans of the movie, but are there enough out there, Brian? Do, and do you have hopes for this movie to be well received? So Constantine one came out in 2005. That is kind of in the limbo period of superhero filmmaking, right? It's the same year as bad. It's like same year as Batman begins. 
We haven't gotten the MCU yet. We're coming off of X-Men The Last Stand. The best thing going, honestly, is is Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2 will come out the year before. So it's kind of like got a little lost in the shuffle. I think it's solid. It's not spectacular, but it's got good acting in it. Like Keanu looks like he's doing sort of like a mystical version of his Neo character, like the way he dresses and kind of acts. Uh, they had Tilda Swinton as a supporting character. I think a young Shia LaBeouf was kind of like comic relief. Like they have a pretty good cast. It's not that bad of a movie. It's not great, but it's not that bad. However, it is one of those that has become like a cult classic in the 20 years since. People have definitely come back to it. And that's why there's always been this little groundswell of maybe they should do it. Maybe they're going to do it. Now, let's be clear. He has said, number one, he would do it. I don't think we have confirmation that he is actually signed. He's just always said he would. What has changed is a finished script has been turned into DC. That kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't realize that they were that close on that. So apparently James Gunn is reading a finished script proposal for Constantine 2. And what we don't know is, is the, was this positioned as Elseworlds? Or is this, because a lot of people are speculating um, Constantine is pretty close to Swamp Thing, and Swamp Thing is one of the DCU projects, right, that they're working on uh, with James Mangold, that they might move Constantine into the main DCU as uh, as part of this. So that's sort of the TBD. That's where we're at. A script for God. So we get Plastic Man, like two weeks ago, gets resuscitated from the dead. The Darren Aronofsky Plastic Man. And now we get a script turned in for Constantine 2. And then we'll get to the other one. You mentioned Sergeant Rock. We're getting kind of far afield here in the DC universe. Like, what's going on here? That's what I'm saying, man. You start thinking to yourself, is this James Gunn just going crazy thinking everything is going to Superman? He must think Superman is going to be so dope, Brian, <laughs> that I'm going to be able to do anything and everything. No matter who owns the company, because that's going to be a big Because Yeah. <laughs> the time we get there. <laughs> uh, Brian. So you, 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 as you were talk, as you were talking about running down that list and I was thinking the same thing is like, what are we doing now? We have a character I, I did not know nothing about. I thought it was the, uh, some, some rock movie. And then I look it up and Brian, and I was talking to Tracy about it and he was like, yeah, this character is, uh, almost taken from captain america but he's a you know he's just a soldier a soldier yep. that everybody respects and who knows how he has disabilities or whatever he just got them. sergeant rock has been around hollywood for almost 40 years this has been one of those things that a lot of people have taken a shot at and it's never gotten to the screen because he's like a comic book character that's not really a comic book character. That's how I would describe it. Like, yeah. this is a comic book character where you basically are going to make a war movie. Yeah. And you can make it serious. You can make it whatever. But just to, to give you a sense of, like, history, both Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger at one point were attached to be Sergeant Rock. DC has a couple of these. So, like, remember, there's been that longstanding rumor that Steven Spielberg wanted to do Black Hawk, which yes. was like, a, that's like a World War II flying mm -hmm. um, DC property. In fact, if you guys remember in the animated series, when they go back in time and fight Vandal Savage, the Blackhawks make an appearance in that, mm -hmm, fighting mm -hmm, alongside mm -hmm, the Avengers. Mm -hmm. They cut kind of like, or sorry, alongside the Justice League. There's a cameo yeah. from them. Mm -hmm. um, I think what gives this project some credibility, and I think it would be Elseworlds, is it's Luca Guadagnino who wants to do it. This mm -hmm. feels like it's coming from him. That he, along with his writer uh, partner for Challengers, a wild movie that came out earlier this year, they apparently pro approached James Gunn in the studio and said, we have an idea for a period piece, a World War II piece based on Sergeant Rock. So that feels like Elseworlds to me, if they do it. Because Luca Guadagnino is a big deal. Yeah. Right. When I read the description of who this person was, I'm like, this is interesting. I'm not gonna lie, this is very interesting how how they're able to uh, pull this off if they can. But the name, Brian. Let's get down <laughs> to the name, Brian. If Sergeant Rock, this movie becomes popular, Brian, you already know who's gonna be 
highly upset, Brian, because <laughs> The Rock is no longer synonymous with The Rock. It's Sergeant <laughs> Rock. Brian, <laughs> this is going to, I, oh man, this is going to be pure comedy and entertainment to hear, to hear the word Sergeant Rock and not be associated with The Rock, Brian. That's what's going to be going, having him go crazy. It is a little odd that he never attempted to do this. Right? I, I, it, like just for the just for the the promotional aspect of this being so obvious and easy. Because he's the rock, Brian. He's the rock. Not some character that so, he's the rock. I think it's weird. I mean, if nothing else, it's going to be the most memeable thing you have ever seen when this comes out. Depending on who they get to do this. Again, Guadagnino makes artsy stuff he makes serious what, stuff what, like what is he made again uh challengers call me by your okay. name like this is okay. a guy who like goes for the oscars with some gotcha, weird gotcha. stuff like weird stuff <laughs> like the idea of him making like a gritty war movie set in world war ii based on a comic book is really out there so this wow. must be personal to him in some way history would say the academy likes war movies right 1917 saving private ryan like this is a long history of like if you can do something like this then you can get attention for awards and if that's the pitch to me that's what if i'm making the argument for what dc is doing there's a little bit of star hunting from the director's chair going on right it's like i've got darren aronofsky i've got luca guadagnino like who like that's what they're kind of I got Craig Gillespie, who's not a huge name, but it's sort of an art art house guy doing doing the super the Supergirl movie. Like that's kind of what they look like they're doing a little bit. And they're going for it, Brian. Yeah. With serious, with serious intent and not goofiness. Yeah, the showrunners, right? They have for lanterns, right? They're they're I think like you know, if we accuse Kevin of kind of star hunting in the lead roles of his projects, I think these guys are star hunting for who's creating the stuff. And yeah. you could argue that's a better hit rate if you can yeah. convince huge directors and writers to, to do stuff for you interesting I was it's a weird it. universe I mean if these things see the light of day you imagine like a DC universe where it's like we got Superman and we've got you know Brave and the Bold plus the Batman and then we got lanterns but then over here we got like creature commandos we've got like plastic man we've got like booster gold we've got like you know sergeant rock and constantine like that's a wild and wacky place <laughs> yeah to me it sounds like the end of the superhero genre it doesn't sound that cohesive <laughs> to me it's like it sounds like the you guys you guys criticized how interconnected the universe is so we're gonna go the other way <laughs> it sounds very it sounds like very much the end brian but <laughs> they're trying to make that they're really trying to go for it they're really trying to go for it is is, is how i see it and uh, and also is that you know james gunn is trying to make some other characters that you wouldn't know popular the same way yeah you know marvel did it somewhat you know uh, outside of the regular marvel marvel comic book fans that knew these characters freaking tony stark is a household name man thor all yeah. these you the know what I'm saying? not the avengers were not an a-list team before these movies came yeah. along there you go and dc record well james gunn's James Gunn recognizes that, and certainly Zaslav recognizes the potential of that. Yeah, I think that to the point about creators, I, I do think there's an argument, and and you know, to be made for. We're at this point in the superhero genre where you have to subvert it somehow. You have to reinvent it. You have to do yeah. things unexpected, right? So the case for is the Batman was an unexpected take on the world it's, it's very dark very serious joker we'll see how successful it is but like they've gone off the deep end with that right and so you get a director who's very different who's going to make a war movie for you yeah like that's going to be the pitch it's like look what we can do look this is technically a superhero movie but look what we can do with it we can make saving private ryan in the context of dc yeah. like that's what they're i think hoping will happen and then yeah hitting Hitting the, you know, hitting the drive down the center of the fairway is is stuff like Superman, right? That's mm -hmm. still the, the classic. So. Mm -hmm. By the way, I will say it does look like they. I don't know if it's a hit. I don't know what we call it. They do look to have succeeded massively in one uh, key area, which is the Christopher Reed documentary 
It was oh. 100, 100 over 100. That's crazy. Days. And everyone says it is a really, really interesting introspective and exploration of him as a man, like what it means to be a hero, what it means to be that part. Um, so that's coming out in theaters two days only. Wow. Um, but uh, then we'll be on Max after that. So that's interesting, Brian. That's interesting. Hopefully, I mean, two days only. Hopefully, man, those people that go get a treat. I'm going to try to make an right. effort to go. I think I'm the second date is the one I'm, I think I'm going to be able to make. So I'm going to try to make an effort to go see it. Okay. On the big screen. Well, I'll see it, obviously, on, online. Yeah. But. On another note, way outside of left field, you get this announcement that Jared Leto wants to play Skeletor. <laughs> Brian, I will not say that I'm not interested. I am curious about this because you know there's going to be a performance, right? What kind of performance? I have no idea, but that's what I'm most not excited, Brian, but most curious to see. Again, this whole He-Man stuff, man, whether it works or not, it can work if you don't take yourself too seriously. If you make this serious, forget about it. It's over. Come on, man. Ram man. Really? What a great toy, by the way, growing up. <laughs> I just want to say with those legs that would pop out. <laughs> Come on, man. Man at arms. They're, you already, in the first He-Man movie, you, they try to play woman at arms. and look. I'm like, what are, what are we doing? This that's You put that in the, uh, final, in the end game scene when the A-Force... The Avengers walking together, you throw yeah. that in that bucket for them. <laughs> try, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I've always said that if He Man needs to be visually in terms of where they are and how things happen, or it has to be sort of like uh, Pandora, right? An avatar. It has to be that that world has to be uh, a character also. Yep. in uh in that movie oh because if you bring me back to around the block it's no it's over <laughs> no if earth make gets even a mention in this movie it's a lost cause but that's the problem brian i heard this i heard it was something like that brian <sighs> i heard something hopefully i'm wrong uh, grain of it's salt just, right grain of salt it's just, it's just, just but, keeping on imaginative you know it's just lazy. To your point, we don't know what we'll get. If he, so he's been offered the role. He hasn't said yes. Look, I mean, I'm sure part of the reason they offered him the role is he kind of looks a little bit like yeah. the character. Um, It'll be an interesting skeleton. He could be, he could be that could be his uh, joke. Mark Hamill, you know what Mark Hamill was the Joker. Jared Leto could be that skeleton. Yeah, see, the problem I have with that is he already went for that with his take on the Joker, which was not successful in mm -hmm. Suicide Squad. He tried really, really hard to put a definitive spin post Heath Ledger on that character. Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah. yeah it didn't um, work. So, you know, but he has an Oscar. Like, I mean, he's, he has talent. He's pretty creepy yeah. in like Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> um, but yeah, you don't know what you're going to get. Totally. Yeah. yeah. They kind of got a weird mix going. Cause they've got a, I think it's right. They have an unknown, right? Nicholas Galitzin, I think his name is, is he man. That's good. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I would rather have that than like somebody I oh, already yeah. have a affinity for. And then they've cast Allison Brie, who is best known for Community, the comedy. She's Evil In. Okay. Um, and then they cast Camila Mendez, who's pretty young. She's like 28, 29, as Tila. Tila. Yeah. So they've got, they've given you a couple of castings that are kind of on the younger side. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what's, uh, what this is going to look like. But I will say this the number one thing the movie has going for it is Travis Knight directing it. That's it. I mean, Bumblebee is a good movie. Mm -hmm. Like that is a legitimately good Transformers movie. Yeah. And he directed that. And he also, I think either nominated or won an Oscar for Kubo with the two strings. Like he's not a joke. So that's, you know, if you're believing in this project after all these years where it's kicked around, that's why you believe in it because Travis Knight's the one in charge. But I'm with you, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical yeah. to pull off He-Man as a, yeah. a hit. It's tough. 
Can it be done? That's the exciting part. Can it be done? Can they make it? Uh, Just don't put the tough. line in. Don't do it. Don't Which give one? Jared Leto the line. Oh, God, no. If that's in the movie, that's an automatic, <laughs> automatic thumbs down. <laughs> Dude, twice in the... the Anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all that's happening in the DC world. Is it getting out of hand? Is it already, without Superman even coming out yet, is it already getting out of hand? And Jared Leto, one, um, being offered the role of Skeletal, what do you think? I mean, you're going to get a performance, you're going to get a different take, you're going to get somebody that's going to try. Right, not that Frank Langella didn't. I think he was probably one of the better parts of uh, uh, the original He Man. But uh, do you have any hopes for He Man? It's hard for me to find. <laughs> it's hard for me to find hope for this movie, but uh, we'll see. Any last words, Brian? No, just uh, like I said, it's next time we tape, we'll have a lot to talk about. We got Penguin, we got Agatha, Christopher Reed documentary. Also, would throw out phenomenal reviews for Transformer with one uh, yeah, on the animated that. side. So I think that also has potential to be a, be a hit. So a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on Nerd Report. The show goes on. Yeah.